What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And in this video, we are continuing our series on learning how to make your own weapon skins for CSGO. Now, in the last video, we sort of switched gears and started talking about Blender. I showed you guys things like tearing your models apart and how to add colors and how to bake and things of that sort. Uh, but in this video, it's actually going to take things just a step further. I'm going to show you guys how to add textures to that weapon. I'm going to show you guys how to burn normal maps. And then at the end of this video, I want to show you guys some advanced tricks for tearing down these weapon models inside of Blender as well. So that's what this video is going to be about. So anyways, let's go. So the first thing I want to show you guys in this video is how to add textures to each individual part of your weapon. Now, as you guys can see here, this is the green metallic P250 that we were working on before. I had made the grip black like this, but obviously it is sort of flat. There is no dimension to it. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is add a grip material, sort of a noise texture to this grip to make it look a little bit more realistic. So first things first, I'm gonna go right down here in the box and I'm gonna hit Shift A. I'm going to go to texture and then I'm going to go to noise texture. Then I'm just going to use my left trigger to drop it into my project. Next, I want to create a bump map. So let's hit shift A again. Let's go to vector and bump. Let's also drop it into our project. Let's connect this color output here on our noise texture to the height information on our bump map. And then finally, we want to take this normal output here and bring it to the normal input of our principled BSDF. Now, as you can see, I have a texture on this part of the weapon, but obviously this doesn't look very good. Uh, I do want to come in here and make some adjustments to make this look a little bit better. So I'm going to go right here under noise texture. And first things first, I'm just going to bump this scale up just a little bit. Maybe something like that. Next, I'm going to add a little bit of detail to it, not a whole lot. Uh, obviously, we have the roughness here that we can play with. And down here at the bottom, we have this distortion. I just want to add a little bit of distortion to make it a little bit less noticeable. And that looks pretty good. Now, this does look a little bit unnatural. The strength of it is really strong. Uh, I can go right here under my bump map. We can take this strength and we can just turn it down a little bit, make it a little bit less noticeable. And now, as you can see, I have added a grippy texture to this part of the weapon. Now, obviously, there are a ton of different things that you can do inside of this program. I won't have time to give a whole bunch of examples. Uh, if you are looking for a specific texture, they make a ton of videos out there that you can go watch. Uh, also, I strongly recommend just getting in here and playing around with these nodes, learn how they connect together. Uh, and then once you start finding textures like this that you really like, make sure and take a screenshot or write this stuff down so that you can use it inside of another project. Uh, but that in a nutshell is how you go in and add basic textures to each individual part of this weapon. So now that we've added the texture to this part of the weapon, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a normal map for it. Now, as I showed you guys in the last video, you are going to want to create colored UVs uh, for the different colored parts of your weapon. Uh, creating normal maps is sort of the same way, but you want to create a separate TGA just for your normal maps. So now that we have our texture on here and we've got our UV selected here, our image texture, uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to go over here and bake it. Now, when I showed you guys how to do it by color, we had this bake type set to combine. But whenever you want to make normal maps, all you have to do is take this drop down and go down to normal. Then once you have normal selected, we can just hit bake. And as you can see, it is starting to bake our normal map now for this part of the weapon. Once this is finished, you can now see this texture has been added right here on this UV map. 
just like before we want to save this off as an image so we're going to hit shift alt s and we're just going to save this so let's just call this normal uv and click save now we are ready to take this into another program such as photoshop or gimp and start creating our tga files so one thing I want to show you guys real quick, there could be times where you get an error down here when you're baking. Uh, just so I can show you how to combine UVs together, I've added a texture to the top part of this magazine here. But when I hit bake, I notice that I'll get this no active image found in material right here. So there are a couple different ways to fix this. Uh, first and foremost, you want to go in right here on your UV. Uh, where you have this image texture set up. Uh, you want to make sure that this drop down right here is not on single image, but it's set to generated. Then we can go back, we can try it again, and I'm still getting the same error. So if you're getting this error, usually the best and easiest way to fix this is just to delete this UV. I'm gonna go into my P250, I'm gonna grab this, I'm gonna hit Control C, then I'm going to go back to my top mag and hit control V to add it back in. Then once I go back and I start to bake this, you'll notice that I no longer have that error message down there. So I don't know if this is a bug or something, but this is a problem that you could run into whenever you are trying to burn UV maps. As you guys can see here, these are the two normal maps that I exported from Blender. Uh, now I want to put these together inside of GIMP. So I'm just going to open up GIMP and I'm going to drag each one of these into the program and drop them. Now, as you notice, when I brought this second UV in, it covered up the first one. Uh, so you are going to have to merge these together in order to do that. You'll just go to this top normal right here and right here where it says mode, you will drop this down to a grain merge. And as you can see, I now have both the texture from the magazine and the texture from the grip uh, in one UV sheet. Now, if you have multiple of these, you'll have to go down through each one and you'll have to grain merge the one above it all the way down. Once you are done, you can go to file, you can go to export as, you can of course change your extension to be a TGA, make sure and name your file normal so you know which one is your normal. Then once you have your normal.tga, you can use VTF and you can create your normal UV for the workshop. The last thing I'm going to show you guys in this video is how to break your models down a little bit further. Now, one of the things that you'll notice if I go and I hit tab and I go to hit my L button and select this, you'll notice how it not only selects this body part, but it also selects this grip down here and this tube. Uh, there may be times where you want to separate these out. Maybe you don't want this to be one solid object. So real quickly, I'm going to show you guys how to separate uh, just this grip right here from the rest of this object. So in order to do this, I'm just going to click outside first. We're going to scroll in here real close so that you can see what I'm doing. Now you'll notice that each one of these vertices has a connection point here, these little dots. If you remember from my last video, I talked about the shift and left trigger button to deselect certain parts of your weapon. You can also use that to select certain parts of your weapon. So if I want to separate this grip out, I'm going to have to go in here and select each one of these points. So holding down shift and clicking my left trigger button, I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to start selecting all of the different parts to this piece of the weapon. And as you can see, they are all starting to turn orange. Now it may take you a while to figure this out. Uh, obviously I want this piece in here too. So we have to add these little pieces. We have to add that one and that one in there. Uh, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around this entire part of this weapon and I'm going to select each one of these dots until all of this is orange and all I'm doing is just holding down shift the entire time and using my left trigger button to select. 
So now, as you can see, I went through and selected all of the parts of this grip. Now we want to follow the instructions as we did in the previous video. We're just going to hit P on our keyboard. We're going to select selection. We would go up here. We would rename this part. We would hit tab. We would select it, hit GY, and just move it out. And now, as you can see, I was able to completely remove this grip from the rest of this body. So this is just something I wanted to make you guys aware of. I did not show you this in the last video, but as you get into some of the more advanced models, there are going to be times where you'll hover over parts and hit L and it will select more than what you are actually trying to select. Uh, and that's basically how you go in and break these weapons apart even further. So that concludes this video on Blender. Now, this video was basically just a continuation of the last. It was a lot of different things that I just could not put into one video because it would have just been entirely too long. Uh, but these are things that you're going to want to know moving forward, especially if you're going to be using Blender to start making weapon skins. Now, in the next video, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to show you guys how you can use all of these programs together. Uh, for a lot of the people who come to my channel who've been using 3D Coat, you know, you're very familiar with how to create graphics and programs like Photoshop and Inkscape and how to use 3D Coat to kind of put that all together. Uh, but there's actually a way where you can take the stuff that you've learned from 3D Coat and you can actually integrate it into the stuff that you're learning from Blender as well. So I thought as a next video, that would be a really good one to kind of show you guys how to do that. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this. I really appreciate it. If you would, please leave likes or comments down below and make sure and hit that subscribe button because it really helps this channel out a lot. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video.